Here are some ideas that will make your home more sustainable. Jen, tell me a little bit about sustainability and what you've done in your home. Well, the first thing, Barry, is that this home is not new construction. This was an existing home that I purchased about nine years ago. So in addition to a house that's very solidly built, very well designed, I have relatively low utility bills because it's shady, because the trees nearby are deciduous. And that means that the leaves fall in winter so that the winter sun, the, sum, the winter sun is strong and the summer sun is shaded, keeping the house cool in the summer and warmer in the winter. In addition, I have a piece of property that's wooded with a small lawn, so I don't need to use as much energy to maintain my property. What do you mow it with? Well, funny that you asked, Barry. I mow it with a real mower, which is a push mower, and this particular mower belonged to my grandfather. So it's, it's been around for a while, and it's a great form of exercise. It's much more musical than the two-stroke engine that usually predominates in the suburbs. And of course, it needs to be sharpened periodically for about $70, and that's all the maintenance it needs. That's every, several, every few years, and of course, no petrochemical use. So for those of you who may not have bought an older home in an inner ring suburb, there's definitely a lot that can be done on a newer home in a suburban area. Very small things make a huge difference. If you can adjust your thermostat a little bit cooler in the winter, a little bit warmer in the summer, that will save you dramatically on your energy bills. As far as hot water use, adjust the thermostat on your hot water heater down. Most of the time that's 140 degrees, which is far warmer than most people need. If you drop that 20 degrees to 120 degrees, you'll see the savings in a month on your water bill. Make sure that your refrigerator is away from the wall. Dust the coils on your refrigerator once in a while. When you consider purchasing an appliance, look into the Energy Star appliances that are available. They may cost a little bit more up front, but what you'll see is a reduction in monthly energy bills for the life of that appliance. And oftentimes that will pay back many times over. As far as outside of your home, consider moving towards organic lawn care, minimal lawn care. Move towards uh, landscaping that's sustainable. Work w working with native species. Encouraging deciduous trees to grow around your house. Evergreens are wonderful windbreaks. Deciduous trees allow the sun in and shade your house in the summer. Why did you make these choices in your life? Well, my family has done a lot of these things my whole life. So I grew up with a lot of these with a lot of these things in place. And one of the reasons is that my family didn't have a lot of money. So we came to sustainability from somewhat of an economic perspective. When you set your heat a little lower or your air conditioning a little warmer, you're saving energy, but you're also saving money. And that money can be put to other uses. When you grow your own vegetables, and as my parents did, preserve your own vegetables. My mother would make jellies and jams, and she would freeze vegetables. She would can the fruits from the trees. We were quite sufficient w with what we grew and we didn't purchase as much as far as food goes as maybe another family down the street. So I think that has carried over somewhat into my life. A lot of the reasons I do things a certain way are because they're cost effective. What that means is that people can make small changes and not only help the planet, not only help their community, but also realize a bottom line benefit to this. And there are many other reasons why people choose to follow a path towards sustainability, but that's definitely one of the, the main drivers that has motivated me. What is your definition of sustainability? My favorite definition is from the great law of the Iroquois Confederacy, and I'm quoting, in our every deliberation, we must consider the impact of our decisions on the next seven generations.
This is Dave Kettlewell. Todd V. And we're back on ProCon talking about the idea okay. of an older home and the solutions there being more environmentally friendly. Did you want to go first, or would you like me to go first? Well, I, I, for starters, I do like the concept. Of, oh, boy, he's already fired up, so I definitely have to get a good opening <laughs> statement here. That We do have a lot of new construction going on with these McMansions in this area, with all these ridiculous homes, with maybe two people living in them. I mean, that alone is obnoxious. There are plenty of beautiful, older like homes in big. the city. I'm sorry to cut you off. That's all right, but there's people plenty like to dream big. Beautiful older homes available in the city that are well designed, well built, will last a long time. They're not made out of these cruddy materials that start to fall apart in the first five years. I, 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 the whole idea of saying maybe if I'm looking for a new home, our apologies I could, to the manufacturers of all modern manufactured goods. Yeah, sorry. Please. Well, I'm looking for a modern. Or I'm looking for a new home. Maybe I could look for a new older home because they put in so many sensible things in those old homes that we kind of decide to put away. Like, you know, even like she mentioned in the piece, planting trees around the home. What do they love to do in these developments? Bulldoze everything and plant little trees next to these giant homes. Go ahead. Wow. <laughs> okay. You know what? She seems like a charming individual. Yes. I kind of personally like the house, but here we go. <laughs> On the potential problem for an older house, mm -hmm. Black mold, mold, no. wet basements, moldy Ray Don basements. New homes, now hers was mold on a high piece old, of land. New homes. Please, please, hey. please. Hey. And I mean, I haven't even brought up the idea that an older home needs a lot of insulation to even come anywhere near a modern standard. You also have the issue that, I mean, to be honest, while that house might fit some people's idea on the outside of what they want with landscaping. It, I've never seen a home like that in Lawn and Gardens or something, you know, right, some kind true. of a pretty magazine. I mean, people like a little bit more um, developed piece of property in terms of grass. And if you have children, they like right. to play right. on the grass too. So it just kind of seems to me that when you're, if you're taking a look and you're saying, you know, which is better, like go to the old home. I mean, yeah, the homes are already built, and I'll buy that argument. Mm -hmm. But whether that home is really going to be more efficient, my guess is that modern windows, modern construction, when done correctly, is most efficient. And you have to ask the question, does somebody want to live with an older design like you have in an older home? They have small rooms, small bathrooms. This is not the way homes are developed today. Modern homes are designed with a larger kitchen area. So what I'm saying is, yeah, there might be, I mean, yeah, there's, there's a benefit to using what's there, even though you've admitted it isn't going to be very efficient with energy. Wait, and wait, it could have you not heard pain, of replacement windows? But, I'm sorry. They put, they make replacement windows for older homes. I so see that guy on TV all the time. So the of the discussion well, here, we're going to put in new windows. Windows, and doors, and insulation. Hmm? Windows, doors, insulation. Plus, they had this wonderful thing back then called a fireplace, which was so charming and provided warmth. You I could have turn a down horse the thermostat. for you. I have a, a covered wagon. <laughs> well, I, I have like a musket. I think we that talked about, do you have a bicycle I can and use? I I'd like to have the bicycle. Tomahawk, and I, you could make... You could make your own leather goods. You could pound them in. I think there's a, really, no, I, I'm just kidding. I understand. But the point is, is all I'm saying is let us question the assumptions. When it comes to sustainable concepts, let us question those assumptions because many times they're going to fall a little flat. Is trash recyclable? Let's find out. Richard, tell me a little bit about what you do here in your recycling business. Well, we have uh, trucks. Uh, we pick up recyclable materials now, over 35 different items, bring them back to our plant, uh, sort them, densify them, that means bale them, and then try to sell them into the world commodity markets. How did you get into this kind of business? Well. Uh, I grew up in a family with a biologist father and a mother who was a horticulturist and uh, during my youth we were always thinking how in our society the United States we throw away too much stuff. But I never really uh, focused on recycling until I was in a company that tested drinking water at uh, landfills and monitoring wells and we found out that there were things leaching out of the landfills and it suddenly dawned on me that if we started re 